story recap here. Today I'm gonna explain a comedy, drama, and fantasy film called Shallow Hell. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. When he was young, Hal talked to his dying father, who said he should never settle for average. Hal's father also told him to find a beautiful lady with a great body, and the man soon took his last breath, so Hal promised his father he'd make him proud. In the present, Hal only pays attention to pretty women. However, he struggles to find the right one for him, so he just spends time with his friend Mauricio. They head to the bar to get some beer and talk about their lives, and Mauricio says he's dumping his beautiful girlfriend, Lindy. Mauricio points out he doesn't like the girl's long second toe, leaving Hal in disbelief. Meanwhile, Hal shares he's finally going out with his neighbor, Jill. Then, Hal catches Jill on her way home and asks her to have a drink with him, but she refuses. Jill tells him she's not attracted to him, but Hal doesn't mind and tries to convince her to stay with him for five days since he's about to get a promotion. Sadly, Jill turns him down and eventually leaves. The following day, Hal doesn't get the promotion and can't help but feel disappointed. His office mates, Artie and Jen, try to comfort him, but Hal says he feels worse because Jill dumped him. Then, Artie points out Hal's flaw, which is picking girls based solely on their looks. At the same time, Jen says Hal is always going after girls who are completely out of his league. Moments later, Hal meets Tony Robbins in the elevator. The guy is a famous TV guru, and Hal can't believe his luck. Hal asks him what he's doing in town, but as Tony speaks, the elevator suddenly stops. Then, they spend hours being stuck inside the elevator, so Hal takes that opportunity to share how Jill dumped him. Hal explains he's kind of picky, describing his ideal woman to Tony. Unfortunately, Tony thinks he's a bit shallow in how he looks at women, and when he asks Hal about his parents, Hal replies he doesn't really remember his father. Hal says his father died when he was nine, confusing Tony since he was already old enough to remember a lot. Hal also reveals his mother thinks he might have been traumatized by the whole thing, and all Tony can do is comfort him. However, Tony tells Hal he's a bit fixated on people's appearance. Then, Tony says from that moment on, Hal will only see what's inside a person whenever he meets someone in the future. Tony also adds that it's a special arrangement between them, but Hal doesn't take him seriously. After that, Tony asks Hal to close his eyes and imagine he's on a beach, looking into a woman's eyes and seeing her soul. While doing this, Tony continues to help Hal relax, and it isn't long before Hal leaves the office. After work, Hal shares a cab with a lady, Katrina, believing she looks beautiful. The woman notices that Hal won't stop staring at her, and when Hal says she's really pretty, the driver can't believe what he's hearing. Hal also thinks Katrina is a model, causing the lady to laugh hysterically. Eventually, they reach the east side, where Hal asks Katrina to hang out with him if she's free. Of course, Katrina is surprised that Hal wants to see her again, so she makes sure they'll keep in touch by getting the guy's number. That night, Hal calls Mauricio and informs him they're going out. In a bar, he tells Mauricio about his therapy with Tony inside the elevator, saying it immediately helped him with a woman. Then, a guy named Walt approaches them, and it's obvious that Mauricio doesn't like him. Annoyed, Mauricio goes to the restroom while Walt buys drinks for Hal, and Walt says he's now retired. He also soon leaves with a woman, and that's when Hal notices Bella. Hal asks Bella to dance, and the two have fun on the dance floor with the girl's friends. Meanwhile, Mauricio notices Hal dancing with three ladies, who turn out to be unattractive. Naturally, Mauricio tries to get Hal out of that awkward situation and says they should go home, but Hal isn't sure why he's acting that way. So Hal ignores his friend and continues dancing with the women, and when Jill shows up, she can't believe Hal is already over her. The next day, Hal finds a pretty lady on the street and follows her to a store. Unaware she's bigger than him, Hal approaches the woman, Rosemary, and tries to crack a joke, but she only gets offended. Because of that, Hal quickly apologizes to Rosemary and tells her he wants to make it up to her, and moments later, they go to a pizza cafe. Hal learns that Rosemary is volunteering at the hospital because she's waiting to be re-enlisted in the Peace Corps. Then, Hal gets impressed when Rosemary orders a lot of food, so he has the exact same thing, making the lady smile. Hal also keeps complimenting Rosemary, causing her to think he's making fun of her. Unfortunately, Hal remains clueless, but he immediately helps Rosemary when her chair breaks. As they leave, two guys mock Rosemary, forcing Hal to follow them inside and call them out. 
Hal thinks they're making fun of his weight, but he doesn't really care about that because he believes he's hit the jackpot by being with Rosemary. However, the men only laugh at him, and they get confused when Hal continues to brag about his date. Afterward, Hal asks for Rosemary's number and learns that she's the daughter of his boss, Steve Shanahan. A few days later, Hal tells Mauricio about Rosemary and says he's nervous to see her again. Then, Lindy shows up and invites Mauricio to the Beatles reunion, but he declines after seeing her toes. Once Lindy's gone, Hal notices Rosemary arriving and immediately greets her, leaving Mauricio shocked. Mauricio then leaves to give Hal and Rosemary some time to themselves, and the two talk about the things they like. Rosemary also takes Hal to the hospital and introduces him to her patients, including a little girl, Cadence. But they get interrupted by a strict nurse, Nurse Peeler. Despite that, Rosemary simply ignores her, and once the nurse is gone, she prepares to play the kissing game with the kids. After that, Rosemary praises Hal for being good with the children and says people usually get squeamish in that situation. Then, when they reach Hal's apartment building, Hal introduces Jill and Rosemary to each other. Jill shakes Rosemary's hand and quickly leaves, and when Hal invites his date to his place, she politely refuses. Rosemary says she's not used to all that and admits she recently had a boyfriend, but their relationship relationship didn't work out. Rosemary also remembers how Mauricio looked at her, but Hal tells her to ignore the guy. At the same time, Rosemary asks Hal to stop telling her she's pretty and not fat, saying it makes her uncomfortable. Of course, that confuses Hal, and he says it's silly of Rosemary to think she's not beautiful. Sadly, Rosemary only gets upset and walks away. The following day, Hal shares with Mauricio how sad he is about Rosemary and says her self-image is so far off. However, Hal is surprised when Rosemary suddenly shows up and apologizes to him, but he doesn't really care about what happened anymore and just kisses her. They then go to a public pool for a date, where Rosemary makes a huge splash when she jumps into the water. Later on, Rosemary introduces Hal to her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Shanahan. Hal and Mr. Shanahan talk about work during dinner, and Rosemary's father tells Hal to make a presentation on Monday. However, when Rosemary and Mrs. Shanahan leave to get some coffee, Mr. Shanahan tells Hal to cut out the act. Mr. Shanahan believes Hal is only trying to be nice to Rosemary, and he can't blame him because of how his daughter looks. He also makes fun of Rosemary's weight, upsetting Hal when he realizes Rosemary isn't good enough for her father. Unfortunately, Mr. Shanahan can only keep quiet when Hal points out it's his fault why Rosemary feels insecure about herself. At Hal's apartment, Hal and Rosemary finally sleep together. They then get closer after that, and Jill can't help but feel confused when she sees Rosemary leaving Hal's place. So Jill invites Hal to dinner, but the guy refuses. After Hal's presentation at work, everyone applauds him, and Mr. Shanahan calls him to his office. There, Mr. Shanahan admits he feels embarrassed for what he said about Rosemary, saying his daughter is lucky to have Hal. But Hal says he's the lucky one, and Mr. Shanahan finally tells him he'll be working directly for him. Later that day, Hal introduces Rosemary to Artie and Jen. Hal's colleagues can't believe he's dating Mr. Shanahan's daughter, and it shocks Artie when Rosemary takes a big slice of his cake. Then, once Rosemary is gone, Artie and Jen express their disappointment because they think Hal is using the poor girl to have a position in the company. Eventually, Hal starts working out, and Mauricio can't help but notice how much he's changed. Mauricio is worried that his friend is now into unattractive girls, but Hal has no idea what he's talking about. Mauricio also says Rosemary has no ankles, upsetting Hal and making him think he's scared. Remembering Lindy, Hal starts to believe Mauricio is just inventing reasons to dump girls because he's afraid. Sadly, Mauricio crosses the line when he says Hal wouldn't even be talking to Rosemary if her father wasn't his boss. One day, Hal and Rosemary go on a double date with Walt and his girlfriend, who turns out to be Nurse Peeler. They then stop by a gas station first to buy some snacks, and it's revealed that Nurse Peeler is actually young and beautiful. However, since she's mean, Hal sees her as an old and strict lady. Once they reach the countryside, Hal and the others have fun in an inn. Rosemary is surprised to see Ralph there, who is also with his friend, Lee Boy. Rosemary then introduces Hal to the guys, saying they're her Peace Corps buddies. Unfortunately, the conversation soon becomes awkward when Hal tells him a joke, and before Ralph leaves, he tells Rosemary she looks happy. 
Then, as soon as the guys are gone, Rosemary reveals to Hal that Ralph is her ex-boyfriend. Meanwhile, Mauricio talks to Tony after one of his seminars and asks him about Hal, eventually learning that the TV guru hypnotized his friend. Tony says he altered Hal's perception a bit, but Mauricio just wants to know if there's a word or phrase that'll turn Hal back to normal. Mauricio also says Hal's job is in jeopardy because of Rosemary, making Tony realize that maybe he made a mistake. While on a date in a restaurant, Rosemary informs Hal that Ralph wants her to join him in Carabas for a mission. Hal immediately becomes upset because of that, especially since Ralph is handsome and he thinks he can't compete with him. However, Rosemary assures Hal she's in love with him, but she doesn't understand why he thinks Ralph is attractive. Then, the booth suddenly breaks, so Hal rushes to help Rosemary before talking to the manager. Hal asks the manager for an extra chair for Rosemary, but the manager tells him to wait a bit as she answers the phone. Hal also gets a call from Mauricio, who tells him the trigger phrase, Shallow Hal wants a gal. Hal isn't sure why Mauricio would tell him that and says he's at Macintosh restaurant with Rosemary. And once he ends the call, he gets confused to see the manager is gone. Instead, a man dressed as a woman stands before him, saying he's the manager. Puzzled, Hal starts going back to his seat but sees a big woman in Rosemary's place. He then asks the manager who that lady is, making the manager wonder if he's okay. With no other choice, Hal prepares to confront the woman, not realizing she's Rosemary. But Mauricio suddenly shows up and takes him out of there. Mauricio immediately tells Hal that Tony hypnotized him and explains everything, but Hal doesn't believe him and starts heading back to the restaurant. However, Hal realizes Mauricio is telling the truth when he runs into Katrina and sees her actual appearance. At home, Hal can't help but feel mad that Mauricio ruined his relationship with Rosemary. So Mauricio argues that he only helped Hal see the real Rosemary, but Hal is still upset. Mauricio then suggests asking Tony to hypnotize Hal again, but he tells his friend to avoid Rosemary in the meantime so that he won't see what she really looks like. Unfortunately, Rosemary suddenly knocks on the door, leaving Hal with no choice but to come up with an excuse to turn her away. Still, Rosemary refuses to leave, so Mauricio puts petroleum jelly on Hal's eyes to make it look like he has a severe case of conjunctivitis. Of course, that prevents Hal from seeing Rosemary, and the lady eventually leaves after making sure he's okay. After a few days, Mr. Shanahan asks Hal about his relationship with Rosemary, saying his daughter is worried because she's having trouble getting him on the phone. Hal then says he's just busy with work, assuring his boss he'll call Rosemary. Unfortunately, Hal and Mauricio are struggling to track down Tony, which means Hal can't see Rosemary yet. One afternoon, Rosemary calls Hal and tells him things haven't felt the same lately. Hal then asks her not to worry, saying he's just dealing with something but adds that everything will be okay. At the same time, Hal and Mauricio still can't find Tony, and Hal eventually goes on a date with Jill in a restaurant just to stop her from bugging him. Sadly, Rosemary shows up there with her parents to have dinner and sees Hal and Jill holding hands. Hurt. Rosemary quickly goes to the ladies' room, unable to see Hal turn Jill down. Moments later, Hal bumps into Rosemary but doesn't recognize her, and proceeds to use the payphone. Hal calls Rosemary as she leaves the restaurant, not realizing they just saw each other, so Rosemary ends the call. Then, five days later, Mr. Shanahan tells Hal to leave Rosemary alone and informs him she accepted a Peace Corps assignment. Mr. Shanahan also says Ralph is the right guy for Rosemary and adds they're back together, and he wants Hal to respect that. Later on, Hal goes to the hospital to talk to Rosemary, but learns from Walt that she left early. Hal also sees Cadence and realizes her skin is burnt, and that's when it dawns on him that he's really shallow. He tells the kid he's been having problems with Rosemary, so Cadence advises him to buy a gift for his girlfriend so they can make up. Afterward, Hal meets Mauricio, who admits he's scared of women because of his birth defect. He then shows Hal his vestigial tail, saying no doctor will touch it, but Hal says it's not so bad. Hal also asks Mauricio to give him a ride to the Peace Corps office, where he doesn't recognize Lee Boy. At the same time, Hal finally realizes that Ralph isn't attractive at all when he sees him, but he still congratulates him for getting back together with Rosemary. However, Ralph denies this and says he's not even invited to Rosemary's going away party. Wasting no time, Hal heads to Rosemary's house with Ralph, Mauricio, and Lee Boy, and he immediately goes inside and kisses a woman he believes is his girlfriend. Then, Mrs. Shanahan, who looks exactly like Rosemary, sees them and wonders why Hal is kissing their housekeeper. Moments later, Hal apologizes to Rosemary in front of everyone, but she only gets upset and tries to send him away. 
Still, Hal expresses how much he loves Rosemary and says he wants to spend the rest of his life making it up to her. Unfortunately, Rosemary says she's leaving for Carabas that night, so Hal decides to go with her. Mauricio also informs Rosemary that Lee Boy swore Hal into the core before going there, and although she's emotional, she can't help but kiss her boyfriend. After that, Hal tries to carry Rosemary, but she's too heavy for him, so Rosemary carries him to the car instead, and they finally drive away. Meanwhile, Mauricio meets a woman who likes dogs and asks her to have a drink with him, and he wags his tail as they walk together. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.